Color is something that in today's world, we tend to take for granted. But before synthetic dyes were widely available, color was harder to come by. In order to produce hues other than those of natural fibers, dyes needed to be created from organic materials. This was bad news for those plants and animals that happened to produce these pigments, such as the marine snail known as Bolinus brandaris. Originally harvested by the ancient Phoenicians, this snail yields a deep purple pigment known today as Tyrian purple. For the 3,000 or so years that this pigment has been in use, it's had a varied and valuable history, worn by the likes of Pliny, Cicero, and nobility in the ancient Roman Empire. But the question is, while we value these snails for the color they produce, does the pigment matter to the snails themselves? The fact is that surprisingly enough, if you looked at one of these snails, they wouldn't even look purple. You'd never know they produced such a pigment. So unlike the showy feathers of a peacock, this purple hue couldn't be used for sexual selection. In reality, the pigment is nothing more than the product of a predatory mechanism, in which the snail excretes a toxic mucus that contains trace amounts of chromogens. And it isn't until this fluid is exposed to oxygen that the chromogens turn into the characteristic purple that we have known and exploited for thousands of years. In this time, our hunt for Tyrian purple has led us to harvest enough snails to create a hill of billions of discarded shells over 50 meters high. But by the beginning of the 20th century, the crazy hunt for Bolinus brandaris slowed as chemists began to develop synthetic alternatives to organic dyes. These were cheaper and more efficient to produce, and organic dyes quickly faded from the market. So although this means that we will probably never see something that is truly dyed the color Tyrian purple in our everyday lives, it certainly was good news for Bolinus brandaris.